So today, something new, which is we know how to calculate the field of a single point charge. What if we have more than one? What if we have a number of point charges and we want to find the electric field at a location? And that's going to involve something we call the superposition principle. which says two things. First is that the net electric field the net electric field vector at a location is the vector sum of the individual electric fields uh, at that location due to each charged particle. So it's a long-winded way of saying that if I have more than one point charge around, I can find the electric field of one and the electric field of the other just using our field of a point charge formula and just add them up as vectors and get the total or net electric field at any particular location. What goes along with this is an idea which says this. The presence of other particles does not affect the electric field, or I could say I should say the contributed electric field due to a single particle. Okay, so what's that mean? Well, that means, let's say, let's look at an example. Let's say I have Q1 and Q2, let's say Q1's positive and Q2 is negative and Q3 is positive. And I want to find the net electric field at uh, this location. Call that location A. So what this says is I can, one at a time, calculate the electric field of each individual point charge, treating or ignoring temporarily the other two charges, treating as them as if they weren't there, and just find the electric field of that single point charge. So I would just say, okay, E1... I treat the situation as if Q2 and Q3 aren't here, and I just calculate what E1 is, and I would use our electric field of a point charge formula to find E1. And I know it would have to point away from that positive charge, so E1 would be in that direction. And then I move on to the next charge, and I say, okay, I ignore the presence of Q1 and Q3, and I just think about Q2, and find the electric field due to Q2, just using, again, this field of a point charge formula. Q2 would have an electric field pointing towards it, maybe of that magnitude. Call that E2. And then Q3, we'd have, we'd have to ignore Q1 and Q2, Treat it as if only Q3 were around to find the electric field due to Q3, and that would be pointing, let's see, away from it, kind of like that maybe. So that's E3. Rewrite this. And last step is just to add them up, add up the vectors. Okay, so graphically, let's see, if I added these vectors together, I'd have, uh, I don't know, E1, that's E2, sorry. 
E1 plus E2 would be something like that, and then that would give me something like that, and then add those together would give me something like that. So the net electric field due to all three of those charges would be something like that, okay, in that direction. And then I could erase the other three vectors to, just to show that there's really only one electric field I'm going to measure, and that is the net electric field due to all those three charges, but I got that net electric field by adding up E1 plus E2 plus E3, okay? That's the idea.